Gamers, welcome to another Tuesday video. This week, we are going to be taking a look at one of the most recent releases for Marvel Crisis Protocol, which is character pack number 71, the X-23 and Honey Badger release. And uh, so, yeah, this is one that uh, kind of, sort of caught me off guard, actually. I was expecting a whole bunch of the other mutants. I didn't realize this one was going to be coming out in the same wave as Colossus, Rogue, Gambit, all of them. Uh, but it's the ones that uh, I kind of got most excited about once I actually saw them. So, uh, yeah, as, as you can tell, like, we are looking at basically the clone of Wolverine and the clone of Wolverine's clone. And just, yeah, it's all wacky. Comics are weird. Uh, so, anyway, we are looking at a couple miniatures, some bases characters cards some tactics cards and some tokens now changing up the format a little bit here we're not going to take a look at the sprues themselves simply because they're sprues uh, there's there's not a whole lot going on there we we've already kind of we, we know what the sprues look like, and AMG has been getting a lot better with their stuff uh, to the point where I feel like it's kind of unimportant. Uh, but anyway, one important note that we're going to see here is uh, their little instruction page. It's now this right here. Uh, it actually takes you to the uh, the on their online site for any sort of uh, instruction builds. I don't know how I feel about that. I I think going online, forcing them to go online is a little uh, inconvenient, in, in my opinion, for that one. I think having the actual instructions on hand would be a lot better. But this is the world we currently live in. And unfortunately, it is what it is. So anyway, moving on here. So we have the tokens here. So we got a couple X-Men affiliation. We got a couple Brotherhood affiliations. And then we got Jonathan the Unstoppable, like a little Honey Badger uh, token. And we will get to that once we're looking at Honey Badger than, uh, herself. Uh, but that's it for tokens. Very, very easy basic there. Uh, we have a couple tactics cards. So first one, we have the Wolverines, which is for uh, Wolverine. So James Logan Howlett and Laura Kinney. Uh, they spend three power each. And if they're within range, two of each other when played they can't be thrown by enemy effects they can't be pushed by enemy effects uh, they reroll uh, any of their attack die and uh, and after an attack targeting them is resolved the attacking character suffers one damage uh, if they were not KO'd and it lasts at the end of the round so it's actually kind of cool it lets you put either of them right into the middle of the fray they're going to do a little bit of damage back they're going to be able to hit a little bit harder for rerolling a bunch of stuff it's actually a really cool card I don't know if I like the fact that it's three power a piece on that one to me that feels a little expensive uh, for the cards especially considering neither of them have incredibly good defensive tech but it's kind of a neat little thing. Um, it's definitely not what Wolverine needed to make him better, though, which is unfortunately. The other one we have here is Jonathan the Unstoppable, and this is an active card for Honey Badger. She spends two power and places Jonathan within range one, and basically when he's in play, he can basically contest an objective, uh, which is actually really kind of cool. And again, you'll you'll see why this is a nice little uh, bit of tech for Honey Badger. Uh, now, in the, uh, now, he does count as injured, so he's never going to override a healthy character or anything like that, but it's kind of a way of tossing a, uh, something on the backfield and maybe getting a little bit of extra play out of it. Uh, now, as soon as an enemy moves within range one, the uh, token does go away. Now, in the cleanup phase, there is a way of bringing the card back to your hand so you can play it again, which is kind of cool. So yeah, um, again, two power, it's it's not bad. It's not a turn one play without something like Wong or Advanced R&D or something like that, but it does give you some, some options here. So taking a look at the cards themselves, so we have X-23 for a three threat. She's got five health, medium movement, three, uh, threes for physical and energy, twos for mystic. Not too bad. She's got her adamantium slash, very similar to Wolverine, you know, dam uh, power equal to damage dealt in addition, bleed and pierce on the wilds. All right, we've seen those. We got Claw Rush. Uh, I do like this one because there is just the automatic, you know, they get to advance uh, medium after the attack is resolved. So that's a nice way of getting some position. There is the pierce, kind of cool. Uh, and also these are, uh, like, that is something where the Wolverine will come in really nicely if you are fishing for those pierces. We do have uh, Frenzy as well, which this is one I actually really like for two power. If she dazes or KOs a character, uh, she can basically advance short and make an adamantium slash. I really like that. I, I think this is actually addressing one of uh, the X-Men's biggest problems, which I think was a little bit of mobility. This is really cool. Uh, I really wish Wolverine had something similar to that instead of just his uh, best at what he does. Uh, she has adamantium skeleton, much like Wolverine. So basically she counts as a size larger when it comes to being, um, uh, when it comes to collisions. Uh, so very nice. Um, 
She has assassin training, so she can reroll one die in her attack or defense rolls. Uh, again, really nice just to get a little bit of that extra consistency there. And then we got Big Sis. If she's within range three of Gabrielle Kinney, Honey Badger, and uh, an enemy character damages uh, Honey Badger, uh, basically X23 can then advance medium towards Honey Badger. Or, well, towards the character that damaged Honey Badger, I should say. Uh, can only use it once per turn, um, but still very nice. Again, it's an extra little bit of mobility. She's deceptively fast. Fast. Uh, and then we got Healing Factor 2. So it's a, it's actually a very nice three-threat card. Uh, I've had a chance to put her on the table. I do I do like what she's able to do so far. And surprisingly so. I wasn't expecting much, and I'm, I'm actually so far pretty happy with her. Moving on, we do have Honey Badger. So uh, once again, you know, she's a two she's a two threat, but she's getting five health, which is really nice. Uh, three, two, two for her uh, defenses. So her basic attack is a Claw Slash, Power for Damage dealt with a Bleed. You know, not, not too shabby. Uh, we then have Hamstring, which is a three power attack. So her spender, uh, five dice. So if the attack deals damage, uh, yeah, so if the attack deals damage, it does put slow and bleed. I really like that. Anything that just kind of puts the conditions on, very nice. Uh, with Elusive uh, on the wild, they can advance medium. So a way of kind of getting there, making an attack, and then getting out of dodge. Having any sort of movement impact, uh, effect like that is always really nice because it allows you to better plan out your turns. Uh, it's a lot easier to to sort of maybe swing twice and get out of dodge uh, and not be left not be left down in the open, which is really kind of cool. We do have Too Dangerous to Ignore. When an enemy character within range two of this character targets another allied character with a uh, with an attack, this character may use the superpower. This character becomes the target of the attack regardless of range and line of sight. She doesn't really have the defensive tech to make me really like this. However, uh, when you pair it with something like uh, uh, Big Sis and Little Sis, because you'll see Little Sis is pretty much the same as Big Sis, only you know you swap uh, uh, Gabrielle for uh, for Laura and all this sort of stuff. You start seeing an, an interesting situation where you know you do two dangers to ignore, and that actually allows X twenty three to maybe get into a position, which is really kind of cool. So you're going to want to kind of keep them within range three of each other for this one to take advantage of that. But it's also kind of a way of maybe just getting an extra little bit of protection. Maybe she's behind cover or something like that. Uh, there, there's a bunch of factors where it could be useful. I don't know how often I'd want to use it, but I, I do like it. I think there is a little bit of play there. Uh, next up, we have Ankle Biter. This character cannot contest, interact or hold objective, objective tokens. So that's where Jonathan the Badger, uh, or Jonathan the Unstoppable comes in. When an enemy character within range, one of this character is attacked by um, by another character, another allied character, the enemy character rolls one less defense dice. That's really kind of cool. I'm not sure how much I like the, the range one on it, but I do like the fact that her just being around is basically a uh, an unshakable incinerate. Uh, and again, it, it kind of creates an interesting situation when looking at big sis and little sis with the amount of mobility that's kicking around. Uh, I do really like it. I think this is going to be something that gets forgotten about quite a bit because of that range one, but really kind of neat. Uh, little sis, we've already gone over that. It's basically big sis, but for, for uh, honey badger. And then healing factor one. So those are the cards. Uh, I like both of them. I think they're kind of neat, and I think they play well together. So next up, we have the models themselves. So just, uh, oh, sorry for the shaky there. So let's take a look at uh, at X23 first. So far, I really like the dynamic pose. I like the, the charging forward that she has there, the leaping forward. Um, I was a little worried about the claws. They are thin, but they're not too bad in comparison to some other stuff. And you'll see what I'm talking about in just a moment there. Uh, all in all, she was very easy to put together. Legs were one piece. Uh, each leg was basically one piece. The torso was the typical two. Uh, the arms were a little thin, uh, but as long as you're, you're careful with them, they shouldn't be a prob uh, pose too much of a problem. Uh, the head was all one piece as well. So uh, very, very simple there to work with. And all in all, like it was very easy. I did have to make sure that uh, I unfortunately my my glue was losing some of its uh, effectiveness, so I had to make sure that she was properly positioned there. Uh, but otherwise, you know, it's a really solid model. I I enjoyed putting her together a lot more than I thought. I like the fact that the tactical rock actually is a little bit more than just kind of there. Uh, she's actually springing off it. Makes for a very dynamic model. So very cool. Uh, then that brings us to Honey Badger. Now Honey Badger. Oh boy. So she was really easy to assemble, but she had her own problems. Uh, let's just see how close I can actually get these. So you take a look at those claws there. Those claws are super, super thin. Like if we, we take a look at that, like look how thin those are. So 
since assembling her, I've been paranoid that I, I'm gonna I'm gonna like damage or break those claws. That's my big concern there. She was very easy to assemble. Otherwise, uh, she did unfortunately commit the cardinal sin of her head and hair are three separate pieces, which is really kind of annoying. But it's not as bad as some of the things we've seen in the past. Uh, but just in general, you know, it, it was kind of a pain. Like I said, these pieces are the ones to watch out for, though. Uh, I I feel like I've probably almost broke them a couple times. They are super thin to the point where part of it almost looked translucent to me. Uh, otherwise, I mean, the pose is kind of neat. It looks like she kind of has sort of like that, that bratty young pose. Um, the, you know, it's sort of a, a variation of the come at me bro type thing uh, without looking like the come at me bro pose. It's very basic, very simple. Not my favorite, but I do kind of like it. It, it, does, it does strike me a lot as someone who's about to like get in there and just kind of be a complete and total pain to the other person. So I, I really kind of dig it. So anyway, that is Honey Badger and X-23, uh, two models that I wasn't actually expecting to enjoy as much as I did. I really like how they perform on the table itself. Uh, actually, if you're watching this, you can go check out the battle report uh, that is up there, the X-Men versus Cabal, uh, if you want to see, uh, see some of their performance in there in one of the games. But yeah, just in general, very nice additions to the game. I, I like both of them, and I'm looking forward to, to seeing a little bit more of what they can do. So anyway, that is the review for Honey Badger and X-23. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Hit that like and subscribe button and leave your comments below. Let me know what you like, what you didn't like, all that sort of fun stuff. That is how I determine how to move forward with a lot of this content. So it's always great to hear back from you all. And of course, happy wargaming.